Good evening. I'm Peter Reznicek from ShadowTrader.net, and this is, of course, another edition of the Shadow Trader Video Weekly for Sunday, August 9th, 2020. How to think outside the box. This video is going to show you a couple different strategies for using options to think outside the box. They don't call them options for nothing, somebody once told me, and they were exactly right. Options means you have options. So you can do all sorts of very interesting and esoteric things with them. And in this video, we're gonna go through some technical analysis on the majors, showing some near-term targets, and then using those targets together with some option strategies on how we could potentially play them next week. The trade of the week this week is on silver, not an instrument that we trade all that often, although the metals were absolutely on fire this week. And in keeping with the theme of thinking outside the box. I'm gonna show you a trade that we did in the weekly options advisory this week that was something that you wouldn't expect. Uh, it was definitely thinking outside the box, essentially. So we'll go through that as well. And then last but not least, we're going to do a slightly deeper dive on gold and silver charts because they are so bullish right now. And I'm gonna show you the one chart that you need to pay attention to over the next few months or maybe even years that I believe is the key to driving gold and silver much, much higher from here. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, let's start with a little TA as we always do. So I think the obvious move here uh, in the coming week is going to be the all-time high test. That uh, makes a lot of sense, right? It's 3393.52. So we're just a stone's throw away. So I believe this is going to get tested this week. It could be as early as Monday. So in keeping with the theme of thinking outside the box, one of the things that I'm going to be looking for, or to do rather, is... I was pricing out what an unbalanced butterfly would look like on Monday, which is obviously August 10th, targeting that 33.95 as a mid strike. And you can see this is kind of a more esoteric type of spread where you are buying one, you are selling three, and you are buying two. And in a very short term setup like this, these two that you're buying, they really don't have any value. They really don't matter. And as you can see, it's a little bit not only unbalanced, but it's a little bit broken wing in that I do have a 15 point wide potential profit here, but if I added 15 here, I would only get to 34.10, but I'm actually doing the 34.20. And I'm just doing that to make it a bit cheaper. Obviously the options that I buy further out are, are gonna be cheaper. And you can see that that spread right now on Friday evening could be placed for a 15 cent debit. Now obviously this will change a bit as the, uh, you know, given where the market uh, trades early on Monday. If the market is down early on Monday, then this spread will probably not be able to be put on advantageously. It'll cost a lot more and it'll probably be prohibitive to put on. But if the market is strong, it may actually even get cheaper uh, because those three that you're selling in the 3395s, they'll be very pumped up in the early, early in the day and maybe it even uh, uh, trades uh, for a credit. So that's an idea that I'm going to be uh, thinking about. Now, when you potentially look at any unbalanced butterflies, I'll give you a couple of, of hints that you can use here, kind of tips and tricks for how to do these trades. This is a type of spread where you are leveraging a number of short options in order to buy a long option. And you should really only do this when duration is very, very short. That's really what this, this type of spread was designed for. You don't want to put on a 132 when you have, say, 10 days out or something because it can really blow up uh, in your face. You really want to uh, use that crunch of time value in your favor where basically this is how options prices are distributed at all times. And little by little, everything is just crunching towards the middle, right? So in this case, this trade makes a lot of sense because as it, uh, you know, as it, um, comes closer to the mid strike right in the money you've got more value and everything that's on the tails is just kind of going going to zero because all this option premium is, is just is just crunching uh to the middle and when i say the middle i mean basically that only that which has intrinsic value at the end of the day obviously has value and all of the extrinsic is is going to zero and and from a chart perspective using that uh, um top of the range there to me makes a lot of sense. So that's one way to potentially play SPX. And I may certainly uh, be doing that in my weekly options advisory uh, where I try to teach people to think outside the box at all times. All right, let's move on to another index, NDX. So 
The thing I want to talk about right now with the NDX is the fact that the relative strength, relative weakness baton seems to be seems to be being passed like almost daily, like back and forth. It's really kind of frenetic right now in the market where you have one day the S&P is really strong and the NASDAQ 100 is really weak. And then the next day the NASDAQ 100 is really strong and the S&P is really weak. In the bigger picture, I'm wondering, there have been some, you know, there's been some talk lately and it kind of makes sense to me of, of people saying that if we get closer and closer to a vaccine, then we will see a huge rotation out of tech because obviously tech benefited from the COVID pandemic. But if we have a promise of a vaccine around the corner, tech may actually sell off a lot and that money may go into the rest of the market. So it'd be kind of like out of NDX and into SPX. Uh, and I don't know if that's exactly how things are gonna play out, but it certainly makes sense to me and potentially what may be happening here is that that sort of repositioning is starting where we're seeing some of the some of the tech names get juggled around and this relative strength relative weakness baton keep, keeps getting passed but overall i don't think that that's uh, happening as of yet because overall you still see like you know huge pockets of strength in like some stocks like for instance facebook was absolutely just on fire um, all week basically, while everything else was just more or less soft. And even the other stuff, I mean, it didn't really fall apart much, just kind of uh, went sideways. Like there's Microsoft, there's Google, you know, a little bit of a pullback and, and then a bounce. Um, NVIDIA rally essentially during the course of the week. Um, Apple also rallied during the course of the week. It was only a week on Friday. So I don't think that this dynamic is playing out just yet. I'm just telling you something that may be potentially uh, around the corner. Now back to the technicals on NDX. The, my main focus, and I don't know that this is a playable event, but my main, uh, you know, just like the S&P is at, at the high, but my main focus is the fact that we are in the middle of the channel right now. And that means it's kind of anybody's guess what the NDX wants to do. But I do think that, it, that at some point it wants to travel to the uh, top of the channel. So if we have the strength in the S&P that I'm expecting to make that one last push to tag the all time high, I think it's, you know, safe to say that the NDX will probably go to the top of the channel. So watch that 11.5 level as a uh, possible target. All right, last but not least, the Russell, which I call the wild card. This was the crazy action in the Russell here. Look at how long this consolidation was. And then it had this fake out move here where it dropped down, which I thought was just, you know, I mean, I wasn't in it at all, but I just thought, okay, that's kind of bearish. Why did we fall apart there? But then it regained its footing and it spent the entire week basically just moving up pretty strong. And What's important is that it finally crossed this high just under the 1550 level, and there's potential that it is obviously going higher. So for this one, I switched to a weekly chart, and I put on this longer term trend line here, which has terminus at 1700. And again, in the spirit of thinking out the box, you could do something similar there, but on a longer time frame, as with the SPX, if we pull up the rut, and I was thinking maybe there's potential for a one by two. This is um, called a ratio spread where you buy the front and you sell the back and this is obviously a little bit longer duration you have to take it out to the end of the week but for the august 14th and i have to be honest with you i don't know exactly how this will price out because you can notice here at the 1700 the spread currently is like super duper wide so i don't know you know right now it's showing a 10 cent credit but this may not be possible but this is really obviously since the market's closed right now i'm having this discussion with you for educational purposes and i'm telling you things that i will potentially be doing next week so you know i apologize if this doesn't price out that way on monday morning that also matters what the market is doing but let's just say that it did price out this way we would have a 25 dollar window in which to make money right because we'd have the 1675 uh, calls making money and the 1700 calls hopefully going to zero and we choose that strike simply because obviously we've got this 1700 uh, target area now this is a one week bar so if we add that on could we get all the way up there i don't know if we would expand range all the way to that but that's not really important and let's just stop right here if we could let's do a little time out right here because this is a question that i get all the time from weekly option subscribers and you know people who just follow these videos where i may talk about a trade that's uh, a one by two or a one by three 
And oftentimes, the first inclination I think that people have is they go to the risk graph. And I'm a huge believer that you should not use the risk graph at all. As a matter of fact, I personally barely know how to use the thing. I think it's an absolute waste of time. The risk graphs in options are only going to show you what the spreads are going to trade for when all of the extrinsic value is gone and you are at uh, expiry, uh, you know, basically. But between when you put on the trade and that date, anything can happen. Lots of different things can happen. And the Greeks of the position are changing, et cetera, et cetera. So that's very important, first of all, is you need to understand how your risk is going to move, how your profit and loss is going to move without looking at the risk graph. You should be able to just look at the options chain eventually and understand here's where I'm long, here's where I'm short, this is what this is trading for today. If I just move everything up the chain or down the chain, I can approximate where things are gonna be trading seven days from now. There's all sorts of things like that. But more importantly, one of the other things that I always get thrown at me is, well, what happens if we blow all the way through and then you're gonna lose X number of dollars at this uh, spot or whatever? And it occurred to me that as, as people ask these questions, not only are they very, very hung up on this concept of, of the risk, but they're also thinking, I think, wrongly in terms of a binary event in that when I put on a spread that's, let's just say a basic ratio spread that's like a one by two. So let's say you're buying one here and you're selling two here and you've got this width of, of a maximum profit. Most people think only in terms of, okay, if I go up to this part where the options are short and I expire right at the sweet spot, I make this whole range, which could be anything from $2 to $10 to $25 or $50. And they think in those terms, but I never think in those terms. To me, options are never a binary event. To me, the entire point of putting on these very, very cheap spreads where you're leveraging what you're selling is the fact that you can slowly have the spread expand in your favor and what you may be putting on for zero on say a Thursday of a prior week, you may be taking off for a 50 cent credit by Tuesday of the following week. And that credit could continue to expand to say 75 cents, a dollar, dollar 50. We've done this with Netflix on a one by three in the weekly options advisory multiple times where we've put it on for free and then we've sold it for 50 cents. We've sold it for multiple dollars. So just understand that, that it's, it's not really a goal of going all the way to the mid strike and making the whole thing. It's a goal of putting something on that has no risk when you enter it because you don't have any debit risk in it and then seeing what that debit could expand to. So for instance, in this Russell example, understand that because there's only a week to go before it expires, if the Russell only gets up to about 1640, 1650, 1660, you understand, I'm still naming prices that are below the long strike. We're not even up to the 1675 where the first strike is. Well, understand that that 1675, as you get up close to it, is gonna expand in value greatly, but those short 1700s where you've got multiple units short, they're gonna to continue to, to lose value, right? They're gonna to continue to just kind of drift lower over time because it's very hard for them to gain value because they're far out of the money. So now that math changes a lot where you've put it on for zero, uh, let's say on Monday or whatever, and by Wednesday or Thursday of next week, if you can just get close to that 1675, you've got a situation where that uh, long call underneath, the, the lower strike is expanding in your favor and those shorts still aren't doing much. I, I've been in many, many ratio spreads many times where I'll notice that I'll be exiting and the shorts that I sold will be trading for the exact same value as when I sold them, even though price has moved up very rapidly and very dramatically towards my whole spread. And then the spread makes a lot of money because that long spread expands you know, to much, much bigger than what I bought it for. And those shorts uh, tend to stay the same. All right. So remember that, that it's not a binary event. There's many, many different outcomes and it's a game of rinse, repeat. It's not a game of trying to hit a home run every single time. If you can put something on for zero and sell it for 75 cents three or four days later, that is a home run, essentially. I mean, you're basically killing it. And time now for the trade of the week, which is going to be in silver uh, this week. If you were paying attention, metals had a huge week this week. Big breakouts in gold and silver moving much, much higher. We're going to touch upon that particularly a little bit later in the video, but in this portion, we're just gonna get a little bit granular and we're gonna stay with the theme of thinking outside the box. 
and I'm going to share with you a trade that I closed this week with my weekly options advisory subscribers in silver. And in this particular trade, instead of buying calls, it was actually selling of in the money puts. And this is kind of a you know, different type of strategy you can use. And here's how it broke down basically. On July 29th, uh, we sold eight units of the 2450, 2350 put vertical, which obviously has a $1 maximum value. And we received an 82 cent credit. So let's just take a quick look at the charts and, and break that down a bit. Here's where silver was trading on 729. And what had me interested was that I saw this move and then there was a gap and then this move here where we were just consolidating. And on this day, I thought to myself, you know what, I would like some long exposure, but I'm not sure if I wanna buy calls. And because I've already got huge exposure in the sector in gold with, uh, you know, with size, and I have actually even a longer term silver trade on, I thought to myself, what could I do that's low risk and yet still has high reward? So I decided to, instead of buying a call vertical, I sold a put vertical that was deep in the money. And I sold the 2450, 2350 put vertical. So essentially selling the 2450 and buying the 2350. And as I showed you in the blotter, we received an 82 cent credit for that. So our max risk in the trade obviously was 18 cents, meaning that if silver stayed underneath 2350, let's say that this breakout here didn't occur, and we just dribbled around and stayed here, by expiry, there would be a loss of 18 cents. So being that I was very bullish on silver, the next day was actually a gap down. And that obviously did not help the trade because being short puts, whether they're in the money or out of the money, you want the market to go up. But here's where it gets interesting. Seeing that we gapped down and it was just a doji and I could see that the downward pressure was not getting any sort of traction, I did something kind of interesting where I sold a naked put at the $20 level right here. And I did that specifically for a reason and I did it for a certain price for a reason because the put was trading for 20 cents. So let's just see why I did that. And it was actually advantageous to do it at that moment on a pullback. Look at the 20 period moving average here. See how it's rising? And, and silver's been riding it. And the 20 MA right here at $20. So my idea was, okay, it's not gonna go lower than here. And I noticed that I could get 20 cents for that put and the reason I liked it right away was the fact that, if you recall, there is 18 cents worth of risk in the put vertical, right? In the 2450, 2350, there's 18 cents worth of risk. So I thought to myself, if I can sell something underneath where I know there's strong support, where I have really good, strong odds that silver's not going to go below there and I should be able to keep all of the credit, correct? Then I can neutralize this 18 cent potential loss and essentially have on a riskless trade. And so that's what I did on that particular day, which was the next day here in the trade, which is uh, July 30th, I sold that 20 put. Then silver moved up, nice, nice day on uh, 731, that was good. Then we move into August 3rd, and then here is where things started getting interesting. We had a big breakout move on August 4th. And here's where I started taking the position off uh, in the sense that when this moved up very, very strongly, this is, check this out, the put that was sold for 20 cents went to 2 cents. And because I knew that I could buy it back for 2 cents, because 20 cents minus 2 cents equals 18 cents, at that moment, the trade no longer had any risk in it because now I'm not short any put and I've made an 18 cent profit on the sale of that put, which is going to neutralize any chance that if we stay under 2350, that I would lose on the in the money put vertical. So now at this point, I, on August 4th, I have a riskless trade. And if you look here, here is August 5th. I then take off 20% of the position, or 25% of the position, excuse me, out of the eight lots. I close two of the lots for a 20 cent debit. And I do that specifically just to take money off the table because the 20 cents represents 
75% of the premium eroding, right? And then on August 6th, we continue higher, which is on Thursday, that's here, August 6th. And at that point, the in the money put vertical is trading for only three cents. And I closed the, uh, I closed the risk out completely for three cents. And as you can see, that worked out uh, quite well because we were able to capture the majority pretty much of all of the premium that was sold. Now you may be asking yourself at this point, why not just buy a call? And certainly you would be correct in assuming that the synthetic call spread, which is the same as the uh, in the money put vertical, right? With the same amount of risk should trade for the same amount, but oftentimes not exactly. So that's something you may want to look into. Sometimes the credit received on one side because there is some skew may be different than the debit you would pay on the other side. So that's one reason, you know, it's, it's something to keep in mind that uh, sometimes it may be more advantageous to do the put sale. But in the bigger picture, I really just wanted to think outside the box in this trade. I already have a big gold position on. I already have a sizable silver position on as well. And I just wanted to, to do something, you know, quick for my subscribers that would show them a way to think outside the box. Because this is an interesting trade as you get close to expiry that you can do you know, when you see that there are areas where you think price is going to go and you want to set something up for relatively low risk where you see that you can sell the put vertical and capture say 85 to 90 percent of the premium as a credit and then that little piece that's left over would obviously be your risk okay gold and silver so as i was saying just kind of a, a big breakout uh in the yellow metal this is the prior all-time high uh, in gld and you can see at the end of last month, we parked ourselves right up to it. And this is what we've done so far in August, just, you know, moved right up on through. And silver, same thing, although silver is, is kind of a different chart in that silver's got a long way to go before this uh, all-time high. So I think it could easily double from where it is here. We're only at the 25 to 27 uh, area. But the real driver of this right now, and obviously there's a lot of factors, but essentially two charts that I want to show you that I think are going to be the real drivers of this as far as gold going uh, even higher over time. And the first one is the US dollar index. Notice that here there was a failure which could easily be looked upon as, as a head and shoulders pattern where you had this these two lower highs uh, bookending this slightly higher high. But more importantly, the trend in the dollar is here. And now you've come to this trend and this is on a monthly chart and you can see here that the dollar index actually on this longer term chart actually has much much further to fall it could easily break through this trend line and uh, come quite a bit lower and if we go down to like a weekly right you can see here now we've caught a little bit of support here one of the things that i'm going to be looking at in the coming weeks is potential to add to gold and silver positions if the dollar index was to come to about here using this prior low uh, which was a support point as a resistance uh, so watch that you know 94 to uh, to 95 level uh, in the dollar index and then the other one is simply a chart of the euro usd which if we put it on the same monthly chart and obviously this is going to look inverse to the dollar index because this is uh, the euro as denominated in dollars because obviously the euro is the first symbol and the USD is the uh, second symbol. So you see this high here of a dollar sixty, you've got a ways to go. And I don't know if it's going there, but what's noteworthy is that this is a long term downtrend in the euro, which seems like it's finally breaking here, which would also signal a weaker dollar. And that's on the monthly. And if you look on the daily, I was noting that here's where you start to break trend and usually when you come to a trend line you'll go like this you'll pull away but in this case i think the euro is showing us that there's no interest at all in terms of selling the euro that it's just holding right up at the trend line and the next move actually should be to stage a confirmed close up above it and again all this just points to strength in the metals obviously as the dollar weakens uh, metals are denominated in dollars so they should continue to get stronger uh, over time and that's all for this week. Thank you, as always, for spending a little bit of your weekend with me. So let's just recap some of the uh, concepts and topics that we talked about. Technical analysis. From the area that we are now, we're just a hop, skip, and a jump away from the all-time high in the S&P. I believe that this gets tested this week, and I showed you just one way that you can play it. Obviously, there's many different ways uh, you could look at that, but I gave you some ideas on how you may be able to play that. 
NDX in the middle of the channel, I think potential that we could move to the upside of the channel. Watch your relative strength and relative weakness in this coming week because I think it could continue to be a factor. Don't let that throw you off if the index that you're trading might be relatively weak or relatively strong that, that day. It could just be a one-day phenomenon and then the baton gets passed. All right, Russell, wild card as always, but now finally breaking out of that larger balance area, potentially moving all the way up to 1700. And again, there's potentially a trade there. All right, options, thinking outside the box. This is essentially what I do in the weekly options advisory. I try to teach people to think outside the box. I try to get people to think differently. I try to get people to not think in terms of probabilities, not think in terms of the risk graph, think in terms of understanding the options chain intrinsically, meaning understand it yourself, make it your own so that you know where you should be long, where you should be short, leveraging time value, leveraging the short duration of weekly options. This is the type of thing that we do on a daily basis. If you're interested, check us out at the link below, shadowtrader.net forward slash options, 49 bucks a month, no contract. You can cancel anytime. Honestly, this is one of the best deals on the street. It's extremely, uh, an incredible amount of valuable information and trades that I put out on a daily basis. And you receive the Peter's Pre-Market Perspective uh, Market Profile Report in the morning for free as well. On behalf of myself and the entire Shadow Trader team here in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I wish you good trading and good night.